So let's get right into it. Why should we talk about the kingdom of Zambia? Why? First of all, let me explain that the kingdom of Zambia is something that Zambia himself promised. Okay, so where did he promise this? When you look on the left here, I have the book of First Chronicles. He told this to David through his servant, Nathan, down here in verse 15. What did he tell David? He told him from verse 11 here, when your days are fulfilled to walk with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, one of your own sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. Go down to verse 14. But I will confirm him in my house and in my kingdom forever. His throne shall be established forever. So some people refer this to the Davidic covenant, whatever you want to call it. It's okay. But Zambi promised this to David and promised to establish a kingdom. And that throne or that kingdom would last forever. Now, the book of 2 Samuel basically tells the same story. Not going to go through that. That's the Old Testament. And the other references, I just picked this too. Um, but then when you come to the book of Matthew and the New Testament, we see not just here in chapter 21, but we see this in other places as well, where Isaiah is being referred to as the son of David. The son of David. So this means that Isaiah is the son or one of the sons of David that we've just talked about in chapter 11 over there. So this was promised and this has been fulfilled through Isaiah. Now, look at what people were saying. Son of David, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Zambi. Hosanna in the highest. What does that word refer to, the word highest? We'll come to that. Keep that in the back of your mind. Make a note somewhere. We'll talk about it some more. Let's go on and see why else we should be talking about the kingdom of Zambi. Isaiah preached it. Literally preached it and demonstrated it. In the book of Luke, chapter 4, says, he said this. He said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God. Notice he did not say, I must preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Or I must preach the good news of the cross. No, he was very specific. He said the good news of the kingdom of Zambia. And then you go down to Luke chapter 16. Again, Isaiah says this. The law and the prophets were until John. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of Zambia. Again, he is very specific. Because he is referencing the kingdom that was promised to David. And he is fulfilling this kingdom. So he's going to preach about it. And that's why he's specific in referencing it. He's calling it the good news. And what is it about? It's about the kingdom of Zambi. Look at Matthew chapter 6. The right here. He's teaching them how to pray. And he tells them, this is how you will pray. So as part of his preaching, as part of his demonstration, of this kingdom here on earth, as part of establishing this kingdom, he again references it when he's teaching them how to pray. What does he say? He says, our father, our Zambi, which is in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. And of course, you read the rest of the prayer down in verse 16. It summarizes it and closes it and says, for thine is the kingdom. It didn't say for thine is the cross, for thine is thy son, for thine is thy faith. No. He talked about the kingdom. And of course, he explained the power and the glory forever and ever. Now, interestingly, and if Brother Nick from Kenya joins, he'll expound on this. Brother Nick just pointed out to me this week that this verse 13 is missing from some versions like the NIV. So they didn't want us to learn to make this statement when we pray, the statement about thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. They did not want Isolele and the children of God to know that this kingdom has the power and has the glory forever. Why would they live it out? Anyway, the main point here is that Isaiah preached it. Now, you may have noticed I'm putting that word it in red. The reason for that is because I want us to understand that whenever I talk about it today, I'm referring to the good news of the kingdom of Zambia. That's the it. I hope you understand it. We'll come to it. Now, let's look at somebody else. We all know about Paul, who was uh, credited with writing a lot of the New Testament, almost two-thirds of it. This is in Acts chapter 28. Paul has just arrived in Rome, where he'll end up being killed. And he has lived there for two whole years at his own expense. But he welcomes all who come to him, and he proclaims to them the kingdom on Zambia. So, Isaiah, who called Saul, now Paul, into ministry, Isaiah himself talked about the kingdom on Zambia. And Paul, who is credited with helping with the expansion of the kingdom, to the Gentiles and everywhere else, is also proclaiming the same thing. Now we have to start asking ourselves, what exactly is this kingdom? You know, but I've just given you three reasons why. Now let's look at another reason why we also need to learn about this kingdom. It says here, the end times pertain to it. Why do I say the end times pertain to it? Look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom, again, I'll emphasize, it doesn't say this gospel of the cross. It doesn't say this gospel of Jesus Christ. It doesn't say this gospel of Isaiah. No, it's the gospel of the kingdom. It is important that we understand this. Will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. We can proclaim everything else, but the end will not come. But if we proclaim this kingdom, then the end will come. It is connected to the end times. Now let's jump over to Revelation. Chapter 21 talks about the new Jerusalem. And John is carried away in the spirit, in the Mwanda, to a great high mountain. And he is shown the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from Zambi, from Zambi. Okay? Just like you had Jerusalem here on earth, which we were talking about a few weeks ago, and it being in possibly Namibia. South, South Africa, now there'll be a new Jerusalem, but it'll be coming from heaven, from Zambi. And what are we told about this Jerusalem? It had a great high wall with 12 gates, and at the gates, 12 angels, and on the gates, 
the names of who? The 12 tribes of the sons of Esau, of Jacob. That is us. That is our forefathers, all those 12 sons. This pertains to that kingdom coming from heaven, the kingdom that we pray and say, our Father in heaven, thy kingdom come from heaven as it is on earth, come on earth as it is in heaven. This is how we have been told it will come. This is how the city of that kingdom, just like the old Jerusalem was the main city, and it was called the city of David, Jerusalem. Now there will be a new Jerusalem. And again, you see the 12 apostles as well. Um, the 12 foundations are named after them here in verse 21. Okay, that is on why we have to learn about the kingdom. So what exactly is this kingdom? What is it? I encourage all of you to come up with your own specific wording of how you would describe it. My description of it is Zambi's sovereign rule over all. And this is why I use that description. So if somebody asks me, what is the kingdom of Zambi? What is the kingdom of heaven? What is the kingdom of God? I say it is Zambi's sovereign rule over all. Then we can get into the details of why I say that. First of all, you see here in the book of Psalms, Psalms 103, okay? This is just a plus I'm giving you guys and everyone who will listen to this. There's a secret within this message here on verse 7. Zambi, he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Moses learned the ways. The children were shown the acts, the signs and the wonders. Okay? So why am I saying this is, makes part of this topic of my description? Who made known his ways? Zambi. Zambi, it says he. He made his ways, then his acts unto the children of Israel. But this verse 103, chapter 103, verse 19, this is really where I get most of my description from. It says the Elimo on Zambi has prepared his thrones, his throne in the heavens. First of all, it identifies who it is, and that is Nzambi. That's where it says the Lord, you know, that's Nzambi. He has prepared his throne. Now, a throne only belongs, it's a seat of power, and it only belongs to kings. Presidents and prime ministers do not have thrones, not even chiefs. A throne is a seat of power, and in this case, only for a king. And where is this throne? In the heavens. In the heavens. This is why we call Zambi the most high. Because there is no other God that is higher or sitting in a higher location, a higher realm than Zambi. He is the most high. His throne, his seat of power is in the heavens. Now look at what it says. His kingdom, his kingdom ruleth or rules over all. Zambi's kingdom rules over all. All what? All of the heavens, all of everything in the earth. All people, all creation, environment, powers, governments, principalities, seen and unseen, all, all means all, everything. In Swahili, we say, kila kitu. So Zambia has established his throne far up in the heavens. He is the most high placed, and he rules over everything. So Zambi's kingdom is 
about sovereign rule over all. I think I've labored on that point a lot. I hope to hear some questions during the discussion time. Let me move on to, to the next point of what is it, okay? So when I say in Zambia's sovereign rule, there's an issue of sovereignty there. Look at when Isaiah was teaching us how to pray. He said, our father, which is in Zambi, which is, or which art in heaven, and it says, your kingdom, your will be done. This is not about my will. This is not about my denomination's will. This is not about my awakened camp's will. <laughs> You know, it's not about Bantu, um, Kenny Bantu's will. It's not about anybody's will, but Zambi's will. That's why I talk about sovereignty. Okay. Your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. We just read in Psalms 103.19 that he has established his throne in the heavens. So there is a kingdom there. In the heavens, there's a kingdom of heaven. And now, Isaiah is telling us when you pray, pray that that kingdom of heaven will be established here, that it will come here on earth, just like it is in heaven. So we are extending the dominion of that kingdom, the colonization, if you want to call it, of that kingdom in heaven, here on earth. So we are extending that sovereign rule from Zambi over all here on earth. When Isaiah was completing that prayer, he said again, for thine, you know, not for Isaiah's, for Zambi's, for yours is the kingdom. This is the part that they removed in some versions like the NIV. For you as Nzambi is the kingdom. Again, you're seeing that sovereignty issue. It's about Nzambi, his kingdom. So it's his kingdom and the power. Okay, now we're getting into some details of what it is that defines this kingdom, what identifies this kingdom. If you identify a power, let's say the United States government or the government or whatever nation you want to look at, Ask yourself, does it have the power over all? No, it doesn't. For example, does the United States government have power over death? No, it doesn't. Does it have power over nature? No, it doesn't. Does it have power over disease? No, it doesn't. Does it have power over the heavens? Can it decide, oh, that eclipse that just happened and Laura was talking to me about it before we started the call, can the government of the US decide, uh, we're gonna change this eclipse and push it to tomorrow? No, it doesn't. Only Zambi has the power over all. And this is the power that Isaiah was demonstrating here on the earth. He could cast the fig tree and it withers. He could storm, he could talk to the storm and it stops. He could speak healing to people and they get healed. This was the power over all, all things. He even said it here in Matthew 28. All power is given unto me. Where? In heaven and in earth. I don't have to explain anymore. I'll move on to the next one. So what is this again? Paul says this. For the kingdom of Zambi is in power. It's not in words. It's not in words. I can teach you guys all this stuff. But if Zambi chooses not to use me to demonstrate his power, because of his sovereignty, I will just be teaching you the words. But if I learn his ways, Psalm 103, verse 7 that I talked about, if I learn his ways, like Moses, 
And through his sovereignty, he chooses to demonstrate his power through me. Then maybe I'll be able to do some of those acts through the power of the wonder. This is what the kingdom is about. It's about power. Power over all. Okay? Now, I really hope you understand it. I really hope you understand the kingdom of Zambia. There is a parable. I'm not going to read all of it. You all know it. You can read it. It's in Matthew chapter 13. Parable of the sower. Isaiah talks about somebody who sowed seeds, one by the wayside, another one by the stony places, another one among the thorns, and then the last ones on good ground. Of all those seeds, only the last one sown on good ground brought forth fruit. And then the disciples asked him, why do you speak to these people in parables? And look at what he said. Because it is given to you, the disciples, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. Okay, now let's see what... I've already explained some of these mysteries. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, um, ask me during the discussion. I'll repeat on that. But Psalm 103 verse 7 talks about what some of those mysteries are. So what is this parable really explaining? What is it? What is the main point in this parable? Here, therefore, the parable of the soul. Now he gives them the meaning. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, it's not the word of the cross. It's not the word of the gospel. It's not the word of anything else. It's the word of the kingdom. And does not understand it or understand it, it not. This one is like the one that fell by the wayside. Verse 20. Someone else, the one who's likened to the stony places, the same is he that heareth the word. What word is this referring to? The word of the kingdom. And does not, and, re, and another receives it, re, receives it, receives it. It is the word of the kingdom. The word again is referred to here when it's talking about the word of the kingdom. Again, in verse 22, the thorns talks. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that hears the word. But it's not just any scriptures. It's not just any gospel. The word here is specifically referring to the word of the kingdom. Okay? But then they choke on that word. They become unfruitful. Now, what is it about the good ground? Why does it bear seed? And why does it bring forth hundredfold? Why does it multiply? Because that person heareth the word and understands it, hears the word about the kingdom and understands the kingdom. Please, brothers and sisters, I pray that you seek first to understand this kingdom. You seek to understand his ways, Zambi's ways so that he may find you faithful and use you to demonstrate the power so that he may get the glory, so that he demonstrates the power of his kingdom and he gets the glory. This is what we're supposed to be preaching about. This is what Isaiah preached about. Even in this awakening, this is what we're supposed to be talking about. Ingeta, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll stop sharing now, and I look forward to hearing from all of you. All right. Thank you, everybody who's joined us. Uh, welcome, Nick. Welcome, Shelly. Welcome, Clement. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, 
Y'all, if you're able, you can turn on your cameras. Um, for those of you who might have joined us halfway through, uh, we've just talked about why we need to uh, talk about, preach about the kingdom of Zambia, the kingdom of God specifically, and we've talked about what it is. Um, I gave a description, my description from some scriptures, which is the kingdom of Zambia, the kingdom of God is Zambia's sovereign rule over all. And I explained that this kingdom was promised to David as an eternal kingdom. And David's son was um, Messiah, or the one people refer to as Jesus or Yeshua. That's him. So I would love to hear your thoughts, your questions, your comments. Uh, if you have a comment, you can post a C in the chat, or you can raise your hand uh, with the reactions. And let's get into it. Welcome, Brother Clement. Good to see you. Thank you. All right. Um, Brother Clement, just for the sake of the rest of the gang here, uh, please uh, tell them where you're dialing in from, um, you know, and, you know, what what you know about this gathering. <laughs> Amen. Uh, glad to be here. I'm uh, dialing in from Houston, Texas, and uh, I'm glad to be in this gathering. It's it's the it's about finding out the truth about who we are, mm. the truth about our origin, and also uh, being able to demystify mm. uh, many things that we have had in the past that may not be true, mm. and and understanding even God's original plan for mankind. All right. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Um, Brother Clement, uh, well, I'm not going to ask you how you heard about us because I told you about us. <laughs> um, but uh, welcome, welcome very much. Elder Patrick, are you, are you, can you hear me? Is Elder Patrick on there? Okay. Um, let me ask, uh, Brother Amakudi, if you could welcome uh, Brother Clement to the gathering, since it's his first time. And then- See, I mean, it's Brother Clement, uh, it's great to have you here um, at um, Kenny Bantu, um, because we're all waking up and um, we are all um, very watchful in these times of what's going on in the diaspora as well as on continent, four corners of the world, etc. And um, having you here as a part of the assembly is a show of faith and uh, and works because um, we're all progressively moving forward towards the will of Most High. And uh, I believe you said demystifying um, in your uh, introduction there. And that's a great word to use for um, what exactly we are uh, <laughs> we're going through because we are um, unraveling a lot of mysteries and things of that nature that would um, push the collective envelope forward. So, um, Asante Sana for coming and uh, accepting the invitation because, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of uh, different groups of people in the world here. And, <laughs> you know, they can be very harsh with their words and even, you know, their, um, their thoughts about the who the Most High is and so on and so forth. But welcome, brother. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. All right, so let me go back to y'all. This is your discussion. What are your thoughts, questions, comments about what we just talked about? And I'll remind everybody, if you could add the name of the country that you're dialing in from, just to help with our audience uh, also on YouTube that might see this. 
Um, some people see that and they write to us and they're like, oh, I saw somebody from my country, you know. Um, all right, so questions, comments, thoughts, it's your time. Um, all right. Again, the topic was about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Zambi. I'll say something, Elder Madavi, Madanda Masaka, for bringing this um, topic. It's very important and it's very timely because, you know, I'm just going to start off by speaking you know, um, coming from a background of Christianity. Um, you know, in Christianity, in my background, as you alluded to in your teaching, when you would hear anything about the kingdom, the it would always be about the gospel of the kingdom, and then they would tie it to teaching about Jesus. So whenever they would speak about that, you could never, ever get, I think the closest I ever heard anyone in Christianity speak about what the kingdom of Nzambi is, was probably Miles Monroe. Mm. Beyond Miles Monroe, I had never heard not one evangelical ever explain what the kingdom of Nzambi is. Where is it? What is this kingdom? You know, but now looking back, I realized they couldn't teach you about the this kingdom because if they go into this teaching you about this kingdom, that would have, they would have to go a step higher and start teaching you that this kingdom has a king and it has a people that's associated with, that makes up this kingdom. And that in itself would open up a whole controversy. So in Christianity, there was always this abstract concept of the kingdom. And it's still there. Um, and, and, when, and when people talk about the end time, they still don't talk about this kingdom that's rising the one that daniel the book of daniel speaks of they don't talk about that kingdom they still continue to talk about as if it's this abstract concept so i just wanted to say that oh very very good stuff i mean yes my brother makudi is clapping right there um I, I I agree with a lot of you, what you've said, Mama Matuzola. I was privileged to meet the late Miles Monroe when I lived in Canada. He was presenting about the kingdom of Zambia. And after the presentation, people were going around and saying hello to him. And we had a little chat with some people around him, and he kept asking us, do you understand it? Do you understand it? Do you understand it? That's why I emphasized about understanding it. That's why I emphasized the power. I mean, uh, I emphasized about the parable of the sower. Because the more you understand it, the more you're going to be bearing fruit. And this understanding is not just what I'm giving you today, which is knowledge from information it's not about informational knowledge it's about experiential knowledge it's going out there doing what you are called to do and experiencing the power of the most high in what you're doing you know you don't have to part a red sea you don't have to do to heal somebody it's Nzambi who will pick how to do it because it's his sovereign issue. 
Uh, yes, absolutely. Miles Monroe was excellent in teaching on this. And yes, not a lot of people talked about or talk about this in Christianity. Many times it's bundled up with a message of the cross, with a message of salvation. You know, Miles Monroe used to like to say, the gospel of Jesus Christ is not the gospel of Jesus Christ or about Jesus Christ. I mean, you, you never found Isaiah saying, I am going to be crucified. I am going to go on the cross. And no, he preached about the kingdom of God. He gave the parable after parable. The kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like that. And he even said, seek first the kingdom of God. You know, I counted one time, 101 times in the New Testament. Maybe I missed some, maybe, I don't know. But I found it interesting that it was actually 101 times that that topic was mentioned. You know, today we say, you know, I told you something 101 times, figuratively, <laughs> to mean that I told it to you over and over again. And yes, you mentioned Daniel. Daniel talks about that. We all know about the statue. And we all know about that rock that came from where? Above. And it pulverized all these kingdoms. Brother Naibu, time is given. Thank you, Mama Matuzola. Love those comments. CME, Salam, my family. Salama uh, Yes, uh, I like the topic, Matondo Masaka. This this is a great topic. Uh, I enjoy. I was listening, and I I wanna read. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can pull it up so everybody can see it. Acts one and six. Yes, I will put it up. Uh, give me just a second. Acts one verse six. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's coming up. Go ahead. So you were you were mentioning how Isaiah, how the kingdom was not was not like Isaiah went to the cross and everybody how it began to be coming in. Because when Isaiah was around with the disciples, they even asked him on the verse six. Mm -hmm. Saying, Isaiah, without at this time restore again the kingdom to Isolele. Mm -hmm. So that's the kingdom is coming for. He's coming to restore a kingdom mm -hmm. to specific people. Because someone is already in the, during the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Like how we say, this is not my kingdom. Mm -hmm. If this was my kingdom, mm -hmm. I, everybody would be following the, my, the order of the Most High. I'll be in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. But Satan even attempted him saying, I'll give you all these kingdoms if you bow down and worship me. So mm -hmm. as long as who was ruling at that time, mm -hmm. it was not his kingdom, but he was coming to restore a kingdom to a people. Mm -hmm. So when we pray, as you say, the kingdom, thy kingdom come, that will be done. Mm -hmm. He's saying, you let your principality, let your order, let your commandments, let your system that is in heaven come on the people so the, the, so the people can govern the world. Oh. So yeah, wow. that's, that's how I got Inget. Oh, wow. Thank you, Brother Naibu. Thank you. Uh, I had not even seen this scripture that you pointed out. Yeah, he's asking, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he responds and says to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which Nzambi has put in his own power. Again, we see Zambi's sovereignty. But yes, you, you brought up really good points. I like that. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Naibu. Thank you. Um, Brother Nick, I don't know when you joined, uh, but I did talk about what you showed me this week with regard to what people call the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> it's really the kingdom prayer. <laughs> um, the last part of it where it's been removed from some versions like the NIV, where it says, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. You know, 
I think it's the Mwanda that led you to find out that it had been removed <laughs> from some versions. But we'll talk about it. We'll put it back. Any any other questions, comments, reactions? Go ahead, Brother Nick. Uh, sorry if uh, you hear some background noises. Uh, I have some dogs with me today, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it's in, uh, my my question, not comment, is why why would he use uh why would he use as an example to the world a societal system of the kingdom in terms of governance? Because a kingdom governance structure and system is different from a democracy or a communist kind of system. So my question is, why would he use it? One, if you look at the African, uh, if you look at the way the African tribes were set up, they were set up in kingdoms the Baganda Kingdom, the Kamba Kingdom, the Congo Kingdoms. So it, it was something that you would relate to because in that kingdom, there were rules and govern their systems. So when I look at the statutes, when I look at the commandments, is if you, if you take the same, not precept, but if you take the same example, it would be easy for someone to relate with because they understand the way the kingdoms work. For example, uh, if, if you had a dispute, you'd go to maybe the elders. The elders will call people, and then you would sit down over a meal and perhaps discuss it. And there would be a sacrifice of maybe an animal, and you discuss it over food and you'd eat and resolve it that way. Uh, so it, you'd go hier by hierarchy. So people understood hierarchy, and people understood that the final say from that, whether it was the headman or the community elder, was the final say. You did not go for an appeal. <laughs> you did not go for an appeal. So when when I see the 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 example of thy kingdom come, you know, and the structure, the the way the Lord's prayer is structured, you, you tend to see it start with our Father who is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy thy kingdom come. So when you look at the first three. I don't want to call them phrases, but the first three levels. First, it's the recognition of the Most High. Then, why does it say location? Oh, our Father, why is he in heaven? Because he doesn't want you to make your own worldly kind of idol or father. Mm. There's a distinction. Mm. Because the other ones are man-made or 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 found on earth, they are not on the same level. So you first have our Father, which means the Most High. Then you say you go to the second place where it's location based, mm -hmm. right? And also apart from location basis, it's also in terms of uh, the divinity or the 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 most high in terms of levels. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have a father in in earthly world, mm -hmm. but when it comes now to, to heavenly world, it 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 kind of completes the entire universe. You're not just the father of just the humans, you're the father of the stars, the everything else in terms of creation. Mm -hmm. Then it goes immediately into thy kingdom come. So take that and then just hold that thought for a second. Then you look at the commandments mm. and see 
What was the first commandment? You will have, you love the Lord your God and love no other gods beside him. Yes. It's it's similar to when it says, Our Father who art in heaven, it tells you now there's no other God. You should then it also communicates the second commandment. Thou shall not you should not have any other God where the car was to, because it's just relating to that specifically. Mm. Mm. And then when it comes now to thy kingdom come, it talks about the statutes, the, the laws, you know, that's the kingdom that you be being mm -hmm. obedient. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to just give that as my contribution. Thanks. Wow. Brother Nick, you, you dropped a big one, a heavy one. I was making some notes as you were talking. And one of the things you've pointed out was the system of government or the system of governance. You know, you talked about democracy versus decree. You know, we all know the stories of King Cyrus in the Bible and other kings. And um, for example, the king that wanted to execute uh, Isolele and Esther had to go in and plead, you know, when that king made a decree, when any king made a decree, what they say, as long as they're saying it when they're on the, on the throne, it becomes law. In a democracy, you got to have the House of Representatives in a parliamentary system, and I don't know, the Senate, they have to agree then they have to take this agreement to the president and then the president signs it into law. Then it's enforced. It doesn't work like that in a kingdom. In a kingdom, the king speaks and then it is enforced, whatever he speaks. For example, in the beginning, Zambi said, he spoke, let there be light. Boom. <laughs> there was no waiting for this party or that party to discuss and agree and not stall the budget and whatnot. No. He just said it. When that king was told about, I think, Mordecai, uh, you know, to make a decree that anyone who doesn't worship and Stuff like that. Who doesn't worship him and everything? Even the three boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those boys kept worshiping the Most High, knowing that they were going to be executed. Because the king had said it, and anybody who didn't worship would have to be executed. Same thing with Daniel. He's thrown in a den of lions because he was praying to his Nzambi. Why was he thrown in the den of lions? Because the king had said and made a decree. So we, as Isolele, are not part of a democracy. We are part of a theocracy and a monarchy of Zambi. Okay? There's one that we believe in, one most high, Second thing I want to point out is you talked about the location, the heaven. I, I don't know if I did justice to this topic when I was discussing, making the presentation. But you know, right now there's a conflict going on. It's very sad what's going on. Actually, there are several conflicts going on. But one of the things you notice when any conflict is happening, when any war is happening, that party or the opponent that has air power, more superior air power, planes, drones, whatever it is, they tend to be the dominant force, okay? In olden times, they would build, powerful governments would build, and kingdoms would build a fortress like on top of a hill. Even the city of David, Jerusalem, was built on a hill. We looked at it. We saw it, right? 
why are they building it on a hill? Because when you are above, you're in a position of power. You can see everything below. You can attack everything below easily. Those below are working against gravity to deal with you. You are just pulverizing them when they're below. So when Zambi says he has set up his throne in the heavens, he's in a position of power. I have not heard of another God that has set up his throne in the heavens or government. Then you talked about idols. Brothers and sisters, as of yesterday evening, 6 p.m., I thought I was going to talk about idols of wood and stone, the gods of wood and stone that Isaiah told our ancestors that because we disobeyed him, you know, we would be scattered around the world and would worship gods of wood and stone that our forefathers did not even know. I thought that was what I was going to present him. But definitely, the one that changed my thinking, because Brother Nicholas was going to talk about it, you know, he talked about it. If you make any idols, first of all, they will not be located higher than the most high. You could even make them and fly them to space. Secondly, they will not have power over everything. They will not. You know, so those idols of wood and stone, I mean, I was even looking at some scriptures. It says in, in the book of Deuteronomy, um, I believe it's chapter four, um, Moses is telling um I think it's Joshua or the Israelites. He's telling him, you guys, you left Egypt. And when we left Egypt, the Most High came to you. And he spoke and you had a voice. Idols cannot speak. You've never had an idol speak. But this most high, you have had his voice. So when we talk about idols and comparing them or even other kingdoms, earthly kingdoms, they don't have that ability, especially idols, they don't have the ability to interact with us, communicate with us. But in this kingdom of Zambi, he is able to interact with us, to speak to us, to feed us, and do many other things. Um, all right, Brother Nick, you have something to add. Go on. Go on. Mama Margaret, you look so serious. Oh, my. You got to tell uh, us what's going on in your mind. <laughs> Brother Nick, go ahead. So, I was, you know, when you, when you talk about the kingdom, uh, if you just describe it, the, the, the kingdom has three elements. You have uh, the realm, I think so. You have the subjects, right? Uh, you have a realm and subjects. I think there's another one. I, not, uh, I think I've forgotten the third part. But you, most of the time, you, you, uh, you kind of have, yeah, you have the, a king, a realm, and the subjects. So the difference between a normal system of governance and a different system, I mean, a normal system of governance and a kingdom system is that even in today's world, you will see there's a difference in how the subjects live and are treated. Uh, I experienced this when I went to United Arab Emirates. First of all, the, the the citizens of the Emirates, you cannot be a citizen of Emirates, even if you're born there. 
you as a foreigner you cannot even if you immigrated there and you've lived there 30 years you cannot be given that that was one of the differences i noticed the second difference is they don't even live in the same place they have their own place they have their own territory then they have got benefits that the normal person does not get so when you look at the kingdom and you look at the subjects the subjects are a reflection of the king. In a democracy, the king does in a democracy, the leader doesn't care about his subjects because they are not a reflection of him. But in a kingdom, the king himself, if the subjects look poor, they're looking bad and they're living in bad houses or different places, it's a reflection of him. So he will make the best effort to ensure his citizens live well. They look good. <laughs> they are in good uh, living conditions because it's a replica of his kingdom. It's the same to us. We are supposed to be a replica of the Most High. So the Most High cares about us. And that is why he gave he gave, uh, he started uh, giving the commandments and the laws, the statutes from way back. And he gave it to the, to the nation of Israel so that they would be in turn be a replica of him in terms of how they live. And because he cares, because he doesn't want to be a, a bad king or look like he doesn't care about his subject, he tries but some of the people don't <laughs> listen or don't take to his. So what do they end up? If you are in a kingdom like Saudi Arabia and you are given free medical attention, but you don't go to the hospital or you're given free education, but you don't go to school. Are you going to say the king is bad? No. The books are there. There's free education. There's free housing. But you don't go claim your rights. So you will be living in substandard because you have not claimed your rights. Not that the, the things that are available to you are not available, but you haven't understood how to claim your rights or how to gain them because you already have the authority that has been granted by the king. So there's a big difference between kingdom and these are the governance systems because the king is ultimately responsible for its citizens and its subjects. The other ones, they just don't care. <laughs> Elder, you're on mute. Yes. Elder. Thank you, Brother Nick. Thank you, Brother Nick. Very, very good points. Uh, I hope people will build up on that. Mama Matuzola, time is given. Go ahead. Okay, you already um, um, touched on this, um, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Um, first of all, I just want to start with a question um, um, that I think begs an answer for consideration is how are kings seated? You know, over, you know, how is a king seated? How is a king established? Because mm -hmm. when you answer that question, you will immediately know that it's much different from that of a democracy. Because, you know, that um, uh, the concept of kingdom come from Tatan Zambi. Mm -hmm. The concept of democracy does not come from Tatan Zambi. Mm -hmm. And in the in in the kingdom, um, in a kingdom, power is you know is with the king. The power is with the king. And as you said, as Elder said, when the king speaks, when the king decrees, when the king sits on the throne and give a decree, it is law. This is what is going to happen. There is no, you know, 
well, I think we should do this, or well, I think we should do when the king decree that is that is it. In the democracy, even the president submits to checks and balances. For instance, if the president in a democracy, if the president wants to go to war, the other branches around him, I mean, the other Congress in a democracy, Congress may say no. I don't, we don't think you should do that. Mm -hmm. So you see how that creates confusion now? Mm -hmm. Because Congress is not going to necessarily agree with him. Mm -hmm. So they're going to challenge him and say, no, I don't think we should go to war. We should do this, this, and this, or that, that, and that. And then, so you got all this, you know, all these different upheaval rises up mm -hmm. within democracy. So, but in the, again, in the kingdom, it's not like that. When the king, what the king says is law, but yet, you know, um, we see, even on the continent, we see um, nations have adopted democracy mm -hmm. as a way to function Mm -hmm. or to govern their people. They govern it according to this system. So I say that to say, I believe this system was the, the system of governing by way of kingdom was moved out of the way mm -hmm. for a reason. Mm -hmm. And the system of democracy has taken its place mm -hmm. for a reason. And so now we see the whole world having adopted this this concept of democracy but democracy never brings freedom to the people mm -hmm. you know but yet they they say this but our concept of democracy and when we think about democracy we always think of it and and conceive it from a western point of view because that's where it came from mm -hmm. so <laughs> that's just my my um my comment wow wow i i like this i'm i'm just making all my notes if i if something is not mentioned i will come back to it but uh very good points mama matuzola brother makudi time is given Yes, family. Um, I want to speak to what uh, Brother Nick just said there to a degree. Um, in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 6, it, it says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Um, it's, you know, and then you go down to number nine, verse nine, it says, And what man is there of you whom his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? So what I was looking at um, before the, um, before the, the class had started, I was looking at a uh, watchman Yahoo, and he was, uh, he he was explaining the difference between a duke and a, a like prince or a king. You see what I'm saying? He was saying that one cannot be a one. A duke is just a person in like a leadership position. A king is somebody that is upright and, and proper. Right, and he was showing the nation who that um, is and stuff like that. So when you when, go back to verse six again for a second, it, it shows you that there is a clear separation. There is an order established to the kingdom, and a clear separation to who gets what and who is what. Right, um, and 
there's it not there. We go down to verse 11. It says, If ye then be in evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things unto them that ask him? So, um, it, you know, we, we also given the, um, we also are shown that the, the ones who, the, the, the sons can directly ask the father in heaven for his, um, his grace and mercy, right? As the other people are considered dogs and pigs. Right, so we are referred to as sons, and they refer to as dogs and pigs. Now, we are not necessarily um, putting people down or anything, but he's speaking in a prophetic, a parable like um, nature, you know, um, and you know, we we establish an order. We are on beginning understanding. You know, I, I was reading Proverbs the other day. And it, it, you know, it says a wise man shall attain unto wise tongues, right? Uh, and then another one, it says, um, trust in, you know, in Zami with all your heart, lead not unto your own understanding. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to share that little bit there, you know. Um, oh, oh, yes, this one here is a good thing I, I uh, swiped up really quick. Um, uh, and go down to verse 13 there, and it says, Enter ye in at the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. And 14 says, Narrow is the gate, and troublesome is the way which lead to life, and few there be that find it. So, um, in the king, in the kingdom, in any kingdom, if there's somebody in trouble, the the king sends his emissaries to go get that that person wherever they are, right? But not and not just anybody can just walk in that the gate of the kingdom. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The gate, the kingdom has walls around it you know sometimes when you look at some of those movies they have water around the whole the the the, 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 the castle of the kingdom you, you can't get through unless the bridge draw down you see what i'm saying so um so basically you know but other than that you know you have the the area surrounding the kingdom or um you know the land where the common people live so that would be the broad way you, you see what i'm saying um but then it says narrow is the gate right so you you can everywhere else is for everyone else but the narrow gate is for the people that is called it, it, either whether it be good or bad you're, and you're being called before the king, you have to go through that narrow gate. So that talk about the judgment toward at the end or even the blessings that you get in life. You see what I'm saying? So, um, or even the, the crown of life, right? Um, where it speaks, of, it speaks about that in different um, parts of the scriptures also, right? So, um, Yes, I almost I almost missed that one to, to share with you all, but I scrolled up so I saw it, you know. So um what's all about family? Yes. Oh, thank you, brother Naibu. I mean, sorry, thank you, brother Amakudi. Thank you. Um <clears throat> before I comment, I want to ask Mama Matuzola, are you still there? Um when you spoke, you talked about question that you asked at the beginning and I missed it. I want to get that question again because I want to respond to it. I don't know if you can hear me. I I, I can hear you, Elder. You, I said, you know, how were kings seated? How were kings yes. 
chosen. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. My thoughts were just racing and I lost it before I wrote it. Thank you. All right. Um, <clears throat> Brother Nick posted the comment. He said, democracy started with Saul. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Brother Nick, please shed some more light in case somebody who will watch the channel is not aware of what you're talking about. Uh, explain that a little bit more, please. I, I, I don't remember the, the scripture exactly, but I think we remember the, the story of when, when uh, God had selected for them uh, a leader, but then the people wanted a certain uh, leader for themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they didn't want they didn't want God to be their leader. Mm -hmm. So in that particular instance, we see the first case of democracy where the people <laughs> want a certain leader to be selected. Because mm -hmm. in democracy you select your leader. Mm -hmm. But in a kingdom as as a uh, sister was talking is is defined differently. Mm -hmm. So you you have the first instance in the scriptures where we see democracy starting with Saul and it didn't end very well <laughs> because when now God brings up who he wanted and which becomes eventually the kingdom of Judah and I mean the it goes down to to the 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 kingdom of Judah and uh, Yeshua coming out of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So we, we kind of see that, and that's the first instance I just recall as democracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before the Romans, that's now before the Romans came in, and also the, the Romans were trying to copy a kingdom based system. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that explanation. Um, okay. I'm going to respond here to a bunch of comments y'all have made. But before I do that, I want to make sure I I give everybody a chance. Anybody else got a question or a comment? I just want to say yes, um, Brother Nick, I agree. And all of this is a borrowed construct. You know, they borrowed different things from and, and put this together. Mm -hmm. Even when you see the way democracy function now, you know, I'm, and when I say in the West, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about, um, you know, I'm talking about the way that the West has designed this, put this together. And then all the other, you know, a lot of countries have adopted what, what we have defined. Um, and when I'm say defined, I don't mean we were creators of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you know, the powers that should not be have put it forth and other peoples have adopted that and use it now it's like the the um it's it's like the um the framework so to speak and now they use that to govern themselves or govern them people their people and all of it is borrowed you'll see some aspects of the kingdom embedded into this thing mm -hmm. we'll see certain aspects of it it's mixed in because they always mix things so yeah and get that i agree with you um brother nick hmm. wow there is so much so much to feed on today <laughs> all right here are some thoughts that i have based on the discussion so far. Brother Nick asked, why is it that the Most High chose the kingdom system? And he gave examples of how these kingdoms existed. Kingdoms existed within African societies. And he gave examples like the Baganda Kingdom and the Ashanti Kingdom and things like that. So people could relate to them. And when you see even the time, I agree with him, when you see the time of Christ, which kingdom was the dominant force in the world? It was the Romans. 
They had an empire. Their king was Caesar. Nobody wanted to cross Caesar. In fact, they crucified Josiah. And they say the reason they crucified him, they wrote because he claimed to be the king. So he was claiming to be in opposition politically to Caesar. That was the official record. And Pontius Pilate changed, was told to change it. He said, no, what I've written, I've written. <laughs> so that was the official position. Okay. So when Messiah was using, and the Most High was using the kingdom system, this was a system that the people were seeing in place in their own local societies. Remember, even before Messiah's time, thousands of years before that, in Egypt, we had the pharaohs. Those were kings. Right? And what the pharaoh said happened. I mean, the pharaoh even made Joseph prime minister, <laughs> who was not from Egypt, you know, but he made him prime minister because the, the pharaoh was in charge. Um, but we were given a model kingdom in the scriptures of what we are supposed to, how we are supposed to be operating. That model kingdom was the kingdom of David. This was the model kingdom. Think about it. The people of Israel, or we solely, flourished in that model kingdom. By the time David was giving money or gold and silver, for the construction of the temple, I, I once had a preacher, you know, who did the conversions of how much that silver was. And this conversion was done, I think it was like around 2005 or thereabouts. A local preacher was talking about it. Um, he said at that time, the silver that David gave was equivalent to 110 billion dollars as of that time 2005 or thereabout this is what he gave his offering to build the temple do you think the children of Isolele were starving if their king is able to give that much towards construction of a temple no they were flourishing then his son is named Solomon, is named as the, the wisest person. He was running the place the way it's supposed to be run. The key thing for me here was that this was a kingdom whose king was appointed by the Most High. That's David. And when a king is appointed, now to go to Mama Machizola's question, how is a king seated? Basically, who puts a king on the throne? <laughs> okay, it's the most high. It's the most high who puts a king on the throne. Okay, his kingdom. Any kingdom that is of the most high, it's the most high who puts him there. Man can create his own kingdoms and put his own kings there. But you see, David was selected by the Most High. He was young, the youngest brother, I think, out of several brothers. And after being appointed by the Most High, based on the Most High's criteria, based on how much you want to know the Most High's ways, how much you've been seeking his ways, not his acts. You know, this is not about going and throwing hands on people and they fall on stages and you get a lot of followers on YouTube or on your congregation because people are getting healed with miracles or maybe they're not even getting healed. No, no, no. It's because you're seeking his ways. Most, I mean, David was seeking after God's own heart. He would be praising him and 
playing his harp as he was tending to the cattle. So God appoints him and then anoints him. You know, recently we saw in the in the United Kingdom, what we call Britain, we saw the current King Charles a few months ago get seated on the symbolic throne as the king. And then they covered up as they were anointing him. <laughs> right? And then they had some paraphernalia. Under the chair was a stone, which is supposed to be the same stone that Jacob in the Bible was lying on. Okay? What, what are they trying to do by showing us that stone? And then he, he was given a staff, a stick, a rod. And that's supposed to be the same one that was, you know, passed down from Adam all the way down, you know. So they're trying to indicate in the United Kingdom, with that kingdom, that they are God appointed. That's why they're using all these things that are supposed to have been originated from our heritage as is holy. Now, in addition to appointing and anointing, we've talked about those now instruments of power. So today, People are using those instruments, the staff. They want to put that stone. But they don't have the power. It doesn't matter if you have the instruments, but you, have, you don't have the power. David had the power, and only the Most High gives you the power. David fought Goliath based on the Most High's power and killed Goliath based on the Most High's power. This nations, like in the recent conflict, the ongoing conflict, those of you who watch this on YouTube or something later on, this is today is the 14th of October, 2023. You can Google and see what conflicts I'm talking about. When this most recent conflict erupted, certain nations, like the US, stood up and said, I st we stand with this party in this conflict. And Britain did the same. We stand with this. So they are giving their support, their power. Right? Not just in words, but militarily and so on and so forth. But if you have the support of the Most High, if you have the power of the Most High, it will be evident. Don't the scriptures tell us that Isaiah, uh, the Most High in Zambi would set up, um, would restore the nation of Isolele, and they would dwell in peace, and they would never be bothered by their neighbors and everything? Somebody please look for me that scripture. I, I want us to talk about it because I know it's there. So... Why isn't that happening to those who claim to be solid? Where is the power of the Most High if you are solid? It is not. Yes. It is not with them. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. It's Isaiah 16. Isaiah 16? 60. Uh-huh. What verse? Uh, around 8. 18, let me see. Um, I think also Jeremiah 10, I mean, uh, 30 should have it. But look up the one in Isaiah, and if you find it, let me know, Brother Maibu. Jeremiah 30. Um, 
You found it? Uh, I have another one in Isaiah 2. Isaiah the 2? of Isaiah 2 also. Okay. Uh, let me get it. Yeah. Oh, I am typing this thing here. I will share it. Isaiah 2. Okay. Two to and it, it is um it's Isaiah two verse two to four. Okay. Let me read it here. I have it here. Oops, uh, I'll actually share it because for the benefit of those who will be watching us, so that they see that we are actually referencing the scriptures. Okay, so let's go here. Screen number two. All right. So Isaiah. Chapter 2, verse 2 to 4. And you shall come to pass in the last days that the mountains of Zambi's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Most High, to the house of God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Okay. Uh, and he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Thank you, Brother Makudi. If they will not learn war any more, if they will not lift up their swords against one another, then why is what is going on going on right now? Amongst the 13th tribe, as we like to call them. <laughs> this is the word of the Most High. Brother Naibi, did you find the other one? I can open it when I'm still here. Isaiah. Okay, I got it. Isaiah 60. Verse 18 to 20. Let me put it in here. Violence shall no more be had in your land, wasting no destruction within your borders. Right there. Shall no longer be had in your land, wasting no destruction within your borders. But you shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun shall be no more your light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto ye. But, the, but Zambi shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and your, Zambi your glory. The sun shall no more go down, neither shall the moon withdraw itself. But the Zambi shall be your everlasting light, and the days of morning shall be ended. Yeah, we still have this violence going on. You cannot fake the power. All right. Let me stop on this one. Make sure I give somebody else. Just, this just read the next where you stopped, if you don't mind. Just thy read the people, next one. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Nick. I would have missed that, man. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Ooh, ooh. You guys remember when we read in the in what is called the kingdom prayer? I'm going to start calling it the kingdom prayer. It said, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and thy glory. So Zambi gets the glory. In it. Again, the theme is repeated here. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Little here, little there consistency all right i may stop sharing this we can go back i see the chat is getting super busy people have a lot brother nick talked about the way a kingdom operates in the sense that the king is responsible for the citizens or the citizenry um that is very true I had an opportunity to meet, I've had an opportunity to meet people from the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the kingdom of Qatar, United Arab Emirates, 
part of it. And one time I met some people as I was on a, on a flight, and this was some people from Kenya, and they told me that when the Qataris lose a job, maybe they're layoffs or somebody's fired, whatever the reason, they are not allowed to take up any job. Their kingdom does not allow a Qatari person to take up just any job. They are jobs which are considered beneath them. They leave those for the foreigners. And then the government sends them money, unemployment benefits. Okay? Several governments do that, like the US, when you're unemployed and looking for work. But get this. And this was this was back in 20, 2019. No, 2017, sorry. I was traveling in 2017. They told me as of that year, the minimum unemployment benefits was the equivalent of 93,000 US dollars, 93,000, 93,000 US dollars per year. For as long as you're employed per year, you're going to receive that from your government, from your kingdom, if you're a Qatari. Okay? I'm explaining this to say that in a kingdom, the king fears the Most High. That's why the Most High selects that person. And when the people are treated like this, the glory, the praise is to the Most High. It's not to the king. So the shame or the glory goes to the Most High in the kingdom of the Most High. It doesn't go to the king in this case, uh, here, um, like it is here on earth. Wow. Then Brother Nicholas, uh, no, Brother Brother Knight, we talked about the narrow gate and the broad gate. Have you ever tried to go through a narrow opening when you're multiple of you? Or even if it's just you, if it's a narrow opening that you cannot get through easily? One time I was getting into an elevator and the doors shut halfway and they stopped. And when we had to get out, you know, I was able to squeeze through, but other people were not able, who were bigger than me. The process is uncomfortable. And the way into the, the way, the narrow way into the kingdom is uncomfortable. It's even painful. There are those who will persecute us. They'll call us names. I have been called names. I'm okay with it. I'm going through the narrow gate. Okay, but it is the, the gate that leads to life. We will stand up on the ways of the Most High and say, this is wrong according to the Most High. This is right according to the Most High. Okay, we are not condemning people. We are saying what the Most High has set in place, whether it is on the issue of relationships of the same gender, whether it is on the issue of should we support this party or that party in that conflict that's going on, whether it is on the issue of should we keep the Sabbath or not, we speak what the Most High has said. We are like, we are not like, we are ambassadors. And our kingdom is not of this world. When you're an ambassador, you don't go tell your opinion. You tell your king's viewpoint, your king's law, your king's decree. And that is what we are doing. And we identify, brother, I think it was um, Mama Matuzola is the one who, who made me think about this. When she asked, how are kings seated? If you look at the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the kingdom, United Kingdom. They seek this people based on the biological lineage. You know, King Charles is a son of Queen Mary, uh, Queen Elizabeth, sorry. 
And you can trace that lineage for hundreds of years. It's been kept in the family. Okay? They're just basically copying. And it's the same around other kingdoms in the world. They are born royalty because they are part of that lineage. But they copied this from the kingdom of the Most High. When he set up his kingdom, he set it up and it had to be under the lineage of David. And David was connected to Abraham. And so Isaiah came to carry on that kingdom. And he is part of that biological lineage. That's how he selected it. All these other earthly kingdoms, they're just copycats. But look at how they copy. They copy so badly. They take a kingdom and mix it up with a democracy. So you, you select a prime minister, then the prime minister has to go and bow down to the king. And the king still is seated on the throne. <laughs> It doesn't work like that in our kingdom, um, but they copied it from us. All right, there's a bunch of messages here. Uh, Mama Matizal, I see your comments, you know. Why is homosexuality still accepted among the chosen people? If all the people are now righteous, uh, wasn't it just this week or was it last week that the Pope say now they're going to consider in the Catholic Church blessing same-sex unions. I mean, it's fine. It's in their religious organization. You know, they can do what they want. They have their freedom. But I just hope they don't try and associate themselves with this kingdom of the Most High. Because this is, this is not what it says <laughs> we should be doing. All right, I'll be quiet for a little bit. I see a bunch of comments. Brother Naibu, thank you for the comments. I see that. Uh, let me see. Um, Matuzola. All right, Brother Nick posted, even so, every good tree brings forth good fruits, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Thank you, Brother Nick. This is from the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 15 to 20. It's in the comment section. Yes, you shall know them by their fruit. You shall know them by their fruit. Um, all right. Anybody got any other comments? I know we're, we're coming up to closing. I know today I pushed it a little bit. We did not close at... Uh, Around 105, but we will close at around 130, which is in another 10 minutes or so. Any comments or questions as I pull up a scripture that just came to mind? Questions or comments? I hope we're not scaring you away, Brother Clement. I'm Shelly. No, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, All right. I'm just enjoying the conversation. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Um, Mama Shelly, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, Elder. I'm enjoying the conversation as well. It is so good and it's good to think about and um you know zambi the way he does things is just awesome he just established yep. you know the kingdom and uh, everybody else is trying to copy like you said and they don't copy well but um one thing you said that was really interesting that has me so upset now <laughs> <laughs> When you spoke about the coronation of, of Charles, I don't even like to call him King Charles, uh -huh. you know, I was so fed up with them. I didn't watch it, but to hear you say now that he has that staff, that just makes me boil because, you know, it's just like them to have all 
our stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing with that? <laughs> that is that stuff that came down from Adam. You know, that's the one that the on the used in creation. He, they, they shouldn't have that. So I'm going to go into some serious prayer about that. You got to dig on Oh, <laughs> I need to know that. <laughs> it just that just makes me boil. And um, and the stone, you know, they they have so many of mm -hmm. our things. That they have mm -hmm. no right mm -hmm. even touch. You know, how dare they? Mm -hmm. But that is just how Kadian Pemba is. Huh? He he will try to take everything that he can. Mm -hmm. so, um, thank you for that bit of information. Because there are many things that they will have to release. And um, yeah, the Mwanda has shown me that there are many things they're going to have to give up. And mm -hmm. many things will be taken from them. So yeah, yeah. yeah that that is not good. They, you know, those those things ought to be in the hand of Isolele, especially at a time like this when, when you know, Tatan Zambi is calling us back together. Yes. People. Yes. Know, and uh, you you said it quite rightly. They have these things, but they don't have the power. They do not, and that's what they took them for. They thought they could have some power, but they they get none, none. <laughs> yep, yep. I mean, so they get none. They have to acknowledge our mm -hmm. God. They will never do. They will never accept our God, and so they will get nothing from mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. uh, other than His wrath. So. Thank you for that bit of information. You know, no, Mama Shelly, you are so wise. You are so wise. I, 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 I don't know how to operate with some, without some of you, ladies and gentlemen here. Um, Mama Shelly said something very profound, and this is for the benefit of anybody who hears this again. She said, "I'm gonna start praying about that." Let me tell you why that is so important. First of all, Zambi says revenge is his. Right? So it's not up to us to go and wrestle with flesh and blood and those people to grab those things back. Okay? We just need to go and cry out to him. We've been crying out to him in this awakening, in those prayer sessions. We've been crying for justice. And he has come through. I mean, I sympathize with what many people around the world are going through. I do. I sympathize. I, I empathize with them. And I hate to see people destroyed. And some of that destruction is from the Most High. Because he is fighting for us. In the kingdom of Zambi, the military, the army, whatever the armed forces you want to call it, it's the angels. And it's, got, it's the Most High's might, the power. He can send an earthquake, he can send a flood, he can send, you name it. That's what we do as a solely. That's what we should do. And he guaranteed us through Isaiah that he would not leave us, nor forsake us. That's the scripture that I wanted to share. Take a look at this. Put it on the screen here. You all know the scripture, Matthew 28. Okay, we read a bit, a bit of it today. And Isaiah came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Okay. Go therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Okay? It's not about what we want. It's not about our opinion or our feelings or our thoughts. 
It's about what he has commanded us. That's what we have to go and teach them. So if he was teaching them and preaching to them and demonstrating to them about the kingdom of Nzambi, as we have seen today, we shouldn't be digressing from that. That's the same thing we're supposed to be teaching. Those are the same things. And that's a command that he gave us. Remember that word command from our regional Bantu languages? In Kamba, we call it tabia. That is exactly how it is in the, con in the concordance. That's an instruction. It's not a request. <laughs> it's an instruction that you follow. It's a command. Then he says here, I am with you always. Even when, even unto the end of the world. That's your guarantee. He is with us. The one who has all the power in heaven and in earth is with us until the end. So we're not going to fight anybody in flesh and blood. We're going to teach them what we've been commanded to teach them. Amen. Brother Nick, I see you have some comments. Please uh, give us some comments and then um, who, who can close for us in prayer today? I have not heard from Mama Margaret. I hope Mama Margaret is in a position to close for us after Brother Nick comments. Are you okay with that? Thank you. Brother Nick, go ahead. You had some comments. Yeah, I was just thinking through when you're just discussing it and uh, it just occurred to me that the whole point of colonization was done systematically to introduce democracy and to wipe out the memory or the system of kingdoms and if you look at the democracy systems, they bring in a lot of other things like uh, all these other things that are not necessarily God or the Most High led. Because a few people who are elected can decide for majority when even, even if it's not right. Two, the reason, the second reason why they they came to colonize is for you to have a kingdom, you must have resources. Without resources, you are not going to have a kingdom, basically. So what do they do when you look at the common wealth? It is not the common wealth. It is Africa's wealth that has been now come common to them for example. So you take the resource Oh, we lost you, Brother Nick. Maybe mute and then unmute and get back, but we lost you there. I would really love for you to finish that that, that statement. Uh, wow. Let's hope he gets back. Machizola, I see you're like, wow. You're just saying, wow, like me. Um, yes, that is right. How, you can't have a kingdom without wealth. No kingdom can rule without wealth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, it's unfortunate. I think it got disconnected and, for one reason you know, or another. Elder, that goes back to with. Abraham, the first thing, what did that zombie give him? <laughs> Land <laughs> between the river of Egypt and the great river, the Euphrates. And we've discussed that in our other videos, talking about biblical location. Right? Right. Oh, boy. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yes, Brother Nick was pointing out that is correct. Um, 
All right, it looks like we've lost him, but hopefully he'll complete that thought um, either next time or if he comes back. So today we discussed why. Why should we be preaching about the kingdom? Why? And we discussed what is the kingdom. If it is zombies will, next time, we will talk about the how. How do you go about demonstrating the kingdom, talking about the kingdom, and making it known? Okay, Brother Nick, we see you back. Um, please finish uh, finish on, on the thought you were talking about. Sorry, I just got... Yeah, so you, you, you take away the resources so these people cannot have a kingdom system. So when you look at the elites of the current world and the systems that they are currently in place in, in the world, you have G7 summit. So it's a few deciding for the world. G20, G what? But then they're all using Africa's resources. <clears throat> so you, you come back again and look at the systems that are put in place especially uh, towards maybe people in the African continent. It's a systematic way of making sure that these people don't come up with a kingdom system. But when now uh, the music is now ringing in their ears and now it's coming out, you're starting to see a kingdom replacing the democracy. You can see it in the West African nations, Mali, Burkina Faso. When now the military come into existence, they are now saying, no, this has to stop. We want it done A, B, C, D, E. And it is not a request. We want your guys out. It is not a request. So you start to see the kingdom aspect being brought back. Because the elites over time have always tried to, to, to downplay the kingdom system. But what they do very well is remain with the kingdom aspect for us to see. You have the United Kingdom and the Queen and the whatever they have over there. And you have some other governments which or uh, existence which have some kingdom systems set up. But majority is to show us how their kingdom operates, yet relying on the uh, on the colonization effect or resources, so-called uh, to subjects. It's just neo-colonialism into this day and age, whether it's resources, whether it's agreements, whether it's funding. It's just done in a very systematic way to keep other people from understanding the kingdom. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. And that, sorry, and that takes away the authority mm. and the power mm. because the kingdom has power and it has authority. Without that, if you do not have financial power, if you do not financial authority, you are quieted down mm -hmm. because they take in your resources which help you to stand up and speak. So by doing so, they tend to, to, to downplay the people's voices. But when you start getting up and starting to speak, because now you're getting in the kingdom coming out of you, because even in the word it says, the kingdom is, with, is in your midst. So when you start speaking up, and you start taking uh, control of your resources, both physical and spiritual resources, you start waking up the other people. <laughs> yes. Because it's just not physical, we also have spiritual resources. Yes. So the spiritual resources become now spiritual assets, become a point of authority, become a yes. point of power. Yes. And then now we're able now to transform that into the physical mm -hmm. from the spiritual. So, Absolutely. 
yeah, that's just my conclusion. Thanks. Oh, I'm so glad you're able to complete that thought. Um, thank you. Thank you, Brother Nick. Um, oh my, you, you already got me fired up and we don't have the whole day, you know, but for, for those of you who are on the Telegram group, um, I'll, I'll share a link to um, a video where there's a gentleman from West Africa. He's talking about resources. He's talking about money. And he talks about how much money is sent or collected by the middle or the Arabic nations that host the pilgrimages, Saudi Arabia. And that pilgrimage is part of a requirement and the Islam religion, you know, for those who are able to do it. So a lot of money goes to that nation. And then on the flip side, how much assets and wealth the Catholic Church has. It is only second to the United States, believe it or not. Where is that money coming from? Anyway, I'll share that uh, on the Telegram group. Please watch it. Just think about it. Um, Mama Margaret, please close for us in a word of prayer. Thank you, everybody who has been so patient and who sat in uh, all the way through, um, especially Sister Laura, who is on the road. I'm glad and I hope you've been able to hear everything and have a good connection. Uh, same with everyone else. Thank you all. I really, really appreciate you attending and uh, enjoy your Sabbath. For those who are still uh, on the Sabbath day, for those who are beginning the, the, the Juma Mosi, the first day, enjoy your first day and your first and the next week also. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get a heavy yakuanana. Bye. Have a good week, everybody.